Bridgewater right now. But in this case, it's Case Keenum again. <laughs> Start tomorrow against the Packers, and it'll be really interesting to see how all this plays out in the coming weeks. Let's start with Sam Bradford. I'm told he continues to do whatever he can to get himself back onto the field, but it was obvious Monday night in Chicago he's still not himself. That bone bruise he suffered back in week one, a non contact play, that's still giving him some issues. With Teddy Bridgewater, he is eligible to return this week, but he hasn't practiced in 13 and a half months. He has a physical scheduled Monday with Dr. Daniel Cooper. In Dallas, that's the surgeon who repaired Bridgewater's knee. That's going to determine the next steps for him. As for Keenum, he might be playing the best football of his entire career at this point. One of only three eligible passers in the league who has not thrown an interception this season. Key benchmark ahead. Three weeks from now, the Vikings have their bye. After that, Colleen, there's a possibility that they could have three options for their quarterback. And as one team source said, that's a lot better than having none. Yeah, that's true. And there's so many changes right now with the Vikings offense. So how does this affect the way that the Packers have been preparing for this game? A huge emphasis for the Packers this week has been tackling the Vikings perimeter players after they get the football. Now, Stephon Diggs is not going to play in this game tomorrow because of his groin injury, but you've still got Adam Thielen, Michael Floyd figures to get more reps because Diggs is out. Coaches have been hammering that in Green Bay all this week. The Vikings' big play productivity has been big so far. The Packers are shorthanded in their secondary. You got to get those guys on the ground. If you don't, the Packers might be on the receiving end of another. Their memorable Vikings touchdown celebration. You know they busted out the <laughs> duck duck gray duck on Monday night, and yes, that is what it's yes, called. None it's of this duck duck, duck duck goose bro. stuff. We've duck, heard that. Duck, duck, I have been goose, man. <laughs> Be proud of where you're from. Tom. I'm standing. I'm like here, standing Tom. in Minnesota. It is gray duck. It is gray duck. Kyle Rudolph was wearing a duck duck gray duck shirt in the locker room yesterday. We've even turned Kyle around uh, to the right side of this thing. I've been told by a very reliable source the Vikings plan to keep up with the children's game theme if they get in the end zone tomorrow. <laughs> oh. So is it Red Rover? Is hey, it a little breaking. freeze tag? I'm Play sure, Colleen, tag. you guys can come up with some ideas back there. Hey, hey, at least you call it freeze tag That's and not true. some freaky Minnesota name for it. I don't know, Tom. I've never seen a gray. Duck before. I don't know. The, I feel like the only place that might exist is Minnesota. Maybe. I've seen a goose, though. <laughs> All right. Thanks, have you Tom. ever seen a goose hang out with a bunch of ducks? That's, That's a great not how point. It works. I'm going to go have an. I'm gonna go have a nice cold pop That's and just get over the stage. Pop, it's soda. All right, listen. It's not, cold, I'm right? telling you, not two <laughs> seconds after they did that celebration, Tom texted and said, "Duck, duck, gray duck," and I said, "What are you talking about?" I don't. About? Yeah, I had no, no idea. No idea what he was talking about. All right, it's duck, duck, goose, everyone. Right. Just like it's mischief night the night before Halloween. That's right. Moving on. Right. Even though Except they're four and one, night. yes, the Packers' offense hasn't exactly been clicking. Their numbers, well, nothing really jumps off the screen here. They only rush the ball about one third of the time, and they've given. Up the second most sacks in the league. Mike Robb is in the film room right now. He's going to show us why the Packers offense is out of sync. Teach me. Yes, they are out of sync. Second most sacks given up in the league. Aaron Rodgers, we just heard my man Ike talk about how great and how special this guy is. They're getting him on the ground a lot, and it's because of the blocking unit. And I got some tape here I want to show you guys. First of all, first of all, you look at right here. Before this play happens, Aaron Rodgers goes to the, goes to the line of scrimmage, and he tells everybody, I got, I got something coming from over this side, okay? And that's going to borrow this guard right here. Now I want you to just watch as this play plays out. Look how the guard is still stuck on this side, worried about the back's man. Again, allowing pressure right up the middle of the offensive pocket, allowing Aaron Rodgers to be pressured, allowing him to get hit. And this is what you don't want to see with Aaron Rodgers. You don't want to see that right there with him covering his face. Uh, he can't throw the ball from that position right there, Ike. And this is happening all over the field. And you look at right here, great disguise by this DB. Anytime a defensive back is just looking straight ahead right there and he has a safety behind him, he's going to blitz. And when you see this one, again, Aaron Rodgers bars this backside guard so that these four guys right here can block these four guys right here. And as you watch this thing play out, if you watch it play out, they have the guys to block it. You have the back step up in the hole. But look, the offensive line did not bang out to this defensive back. Now, Aaron Rodgers still gets the playoff, but he takes that hit. That's what you don't want to see. You do not want to see Aaron Rodgers right there. 
right that shot really to the back up to the back of his helmet. You do not want to see that shot right here. And this is why I know you see Green Bay, they're doing great, they're winning some games, but it's hard for them. And if they don't get the inside part of this blocking unit uh, established and shored up, I don't know how many more games they're going to win late in the season. Yeah, I mean, that, that's true, Mike Rob. And you look at that offensive line, five different O-line combinations, and it's only week six. They have, they played five games. That's absurd. Tom, Tom Brady did the same thing, too, last year, right? They went yeah. through a lot of combinations. They did. They won the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, they did. So I don't know why, because huh? they eventually came together when it mattered. So that's why you don't overreact in October. Mm. That's we'll good. See that's a good if breakdown. That happens hey, man, that's what Packers. I do. Man. Way to be, man. Way to be. I love to learn on Saturdays. Oh, come on, man. And you come here. It's right. And you know what else? Fantasy. You come here for fantasy advice. Fantasy Bing, quarterback. Bing. Yeah, that's that bell. Ring it. They're a funny thing, but not as funny as Adam Rank's hot takes on these guys this week. Another round of